Hey friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge. Uh, the noise you're hearing in the background could be my wife doing some sewing or it could be our furnace. Sorry about the extra noise. I have to do this in the basement. Uh, you probably saw about a month ago the unboxing for this. The WorkSharp Precision. The budget precision knife sharpening system. I was going to do a review of it. But now that my surgery for my knee replacement is coming up very soon, I'm getting my partial replacement turned into a full replacement. And that's because my replacement's failing, it's falling apart. Literally the bone is falling away, subsiding from the replacement. So I gotta get it taken out and a full one put in. I've got a date for December 1st to have that done. So at the end of November, you'll see no more videos from Canadian Cutting Edge probably until mid to late January. I'll try to post some things to our community page. That is youtube.com slash Canadian Cutting Edge slash community. Also my Instagram page, which is at Canadian Cutting Edge. I'll try to post some stills, maybe a very, very tiny videos there, but I won't be able to do reviews for a while. So I was gonna review this and recently one of my viewers, my longtime viewers, suggested a sharpening system from China from, I'll pronounce the name, Ruxin. I've had a sharpening uh, system from this company before. It looks like this. And that sharpening system is garbage. It's really, really terrible. I took a good close look at the one that I'm going to talk about today, decided to buy it. I've had it for about two and a half weeks now. I've used it a bit. And I've used this quite a lot, so I'm going to compare the two. I usually don't do comparison videos. So you'll hear what I think of this and what I think of that machine. This thing's about 50 American dollars. You can save 10% on White Mountain Knives with coupon code CCE. Or you can get that other system, which is around you know the mid-20s up to 50. Depends on what kind of accessories you get with it. And I suggest that you get none of the different stones that are with it. The stones that they send with it, uh, they've got diamond stones and they've got some other stones. They're just garbage. It's just a fine layer of diamonds at the top that wears away really quick. And the other stones are, they just wear away really quick too. I've tested them. But I've got some other suggestions for some good stones that work with really low cost systems in this video. So I think you're gonna wanna stick around and watch Maybe grab yourself a sandwich or a drink or something. This video is going to be a little bit longer. So stay tuned. We're going to compare the very low budget sharpening systems. Before I start that, I want to let you know, I always suggest getting the very best sharpening system that you can afford. I collect budget knives, but my sharpening systems that I use every day cost in the hundreds of dollars each. I figure a $300 sharpening system or $400 sharpening system, if I sharpen, you know, a whole bunch of $50 knives on it, I'm going to get my value back pretty quickly. Why should my sharpening system cost only as much as a knife does? Is it only worth as much as one knife? No, I think a good sharpening system is worth a lot of knives because not only can you sharpen yours, you can sharpen for your friends and your family and maybe even start a side business, which I'm doing. I sharpen uh, for customers. So I'm not gonna try to get any sharpening jobs now, but once I come back in the new year, I'll do uh, more sharpening for consumers just like you. So without any further bibble babble, let's get at it. All right, here we've got the WorkSharp Pro, uh, Precision, not Pro, the WorkSharp Precision. You've probably seen a number of videos about this already. If you haven't, go check out some of those other videos. I've got a different take on this thing. I dislike it, I dislike it a lot. Why? Well, it's got some good things, but we've got short stones and not very wide stones, which means these things are going to wear out a whole lot quicker than traditional stones on sharpening systems, which have just a whole lot more square inchage <laughs> instead of footage, square space. 
Here's what a typical sharpener stone looks like. Now look at that. You've got three times as much room to sharpen with, which means if you use, you know, most of your stone, you can't use either end exactly because you can't bring it right to the end. If you do, you end up starting to scratch the bevel. So you've got wider space to use and you've got longer space to use it's gonna wear down a whole lot more slowly. Yeah, you can buy replacements for these, but you're gonna be buying them more often. Your typical sharpening stone looks a lot like this. It's got a back plate and a stone. You can get 101 different types, as in the, the stone that's on there. You can get diamond stones, uh, you can get silicon carbide, you can get all kinds of different stones, real stones, natural stones, in this format. So I dislike that it's proprietary. That's one of the things. And you've only got three to choose from. Three surfaces, three grits. The standard comes with this 320 and uh, with 600 and a ceramic stone. 320, that's not coarse enough to reprofile anything. And if you've watched my channel for any amount of time, you know that factories don't do nice clean edges. They've got all kinds of different angles along the edge, usually several degrees difference along the full length. It's gonna take you a long time with the 320. Like I use like 80 grit stone to start with to clean up the angles very often. Sometimes 120, but this is 320. So a proprietary thing. You do have a little rubber stop here which is nice so that when you're stroking on it, it doesn't come all the way down the off the stone or up. You've got a little magnet here that holds it in place. So once you've got it in the right spot, it sometimes drops out of there while you're using it. So that's a pain. So it just, while you're using the thing, it comes loose because, let's get it in there. Get in there, come on, there you go. Because while you're doing your sharpening like this, you're probably pushing down a little bit. If you don't push down a little bit, you're gonna be going like this forever. <laughs> you know, that's just going to be a pain in the butt. Another problem is how it mounts on there. Sorry that the lighting's not better. I've got as much light here as I can get. Uh, so here, I got a knife. And I wanna put it in there. I found it works best if I put the tip in there and then slide it across. So to get the knife in there, I want to have most of the edge running parallel to this point here. So that means on this knife, it's gonna be like that. So back here, it's not touching the end of that little V groove to put it in. If I put it in with that V groove, then the knife is gonna sit like this which means this is gonna be much further away than that is, so that means the angle's gonna change quite a lot along there. So you don't want the angle changing much. So you do that, you hold it tight, and you turn this wheel to tighten it up, and you tighten it up as much as you can, and it still wiggles really easily. So at least as tight as you can reasonably tighten it. So it doesn't hold very well. It holds okay, but not very well. And then it holds this piece with magnets in there. Just like that. And it can fall out of there very easily. So you got to make sure... Come on, line up. There you go. You got to make sure that when it's in there, you don't touch the knife at all. So you don't knock it out. Then when you want to go to turn the knife 180 degrees... Let's get this out of the way. You've got to hold it so that you can push this back button in. So that gets pushed in so that you can then rotate it. Oh, I put it in the wrong way already. Let's start it over here. It works either way. So I've got to push it in and then rotate and then it pulls it back. Now, as you can see, there's a fair bit of play here from side to side. If I go like this, there's a fair bit of looseness going side to side this way and a little bit up and down. 
I find it really hard. Actually, it's, it's painful. I've got arthritis in my thumb, especially in that knuckle on my thumb. And yet I've got to hold it here, push with these two fingers and my thumb to try to get that to loosen. And you're pushing, you're pushing your thumb sideways this way. So it's a very unnatural direction that you're pushing your thumb. That really hurts. It literally is painful. So I can try to do it from the top and then I can sometimes get it that way, but that's just bad. It's a interesting idea, but it's bad. It's, if you're young and fit and don't have any problems with your health, that's okay. But literally sharpening just one knife, turning it back and forth a few times, going through the different grit, my hand got very, very sore, painful for a few days. Well, really bad for one day, but still painful for a few days. So that's not good. The angle adjustment. Yes, you can do fine angle adjustments, <laughs> but don't you dare trust these. <laughs> Those numbers are not good at all. I don't know exactly how far away from the uh, front of the clamp the edge has to be for these stones to get accurate, but just a little bit off either way. So if your knife is very deep this way, it's going to be way off. If your knife is very narrow from the spine to the cutting edge, it's going to change the numbers. So these numbers can't be trusted. They're off by a couple degrees at least. It's just the way it is. But at least you can keep the same angle from one side to another. So there's something good about that. And then it's made out of plastic. It's very light. You've got little rubber feet to hold it from moving, but it just moves all over the place while you're working. So you have to hold it down with one hand and then get in there. It's hard to get this in there with one hand. There we go. And there, get that done right. And now to sharpen it, watch what I have to do. I got to get over it and do this. Now I can move this a little bit so that I can go down further. So I like that they've got something like that to adjust it. But what I found is while I'm doing this, I keep pounding it further off the end and then I'm going to slide over the end off the plastic and that's no good. Plus to hold this, it's really hard to hold it perfectly level the whole time and not off to the side a little bit even just a little bit, because if you hold it off to the edge a little bit, then you're sharpening just with the edge of the stone instead of the flat of the stone. So it's hard to keep it going just with the flat of the stone. And you've got to do a million tiny little strokes. To sharpen your knife. And it's uncomfortable. It's awkward because you've got to go up over the top to do it. Doing it this way, you're hunched over, it's bad for your neck, bad for your back. It's just a bad device. I will sell this for very cheap to somebody. These are at White Mountain Knives for just under 50 US dollars. I think it's $49.95. You can save 10% there with coupon code CCE, which makes it you know closer to $45. So for 45 US dollars, you can do a whole lot better. You can get one of these for $25. Sometimes you can find them for $20 on AliExpress. So not much money to get one of these. Now let's take it back apart to show you the components. It doesn't come with a knife on it, but I've got a knife on it. Uh, this part comes assembled the way it is right here. You've got a clamp so that you can clamp it onto a table to hold it steady, which works good. You've got this plastic foot here and this metal foot on the bottom that's you know free spinning here. So you can clamp it nice and secure. It's got a spring in here that you pull out and turn. So it pulls out and turns to do your 90 degree flip. So you can flip either direction, whichever way your dominant hand wants to flip. So that's fine. It's got a clamp here with these two steel plates. 
and those squeeze together using three screws. Those are four millimeter screws. And so you tighten those down to hold it. I'm just holding it on one side here and tighten it down. It holds fine because the blade's so long, I want to be able to sharpen the tip. So I needed that tip to stick out. I mean, the blade's too short for this long plate. So that sticks out. Now, before you get too far, uh, I pronounce that Ruxin, R-U-I-X-I-N. So this is the Ruxin Pro. They've got another Ruxin Pro, this odd tabletop model thing, which I've had one of, and it's pure garbage. Don't get that Ruxin Pro. But this Ruxin Pro is okay. So let's, I'm going to screw it onto the table here. Back up the camera a little bit. So it just goes onto the table. Actually, I'm gonna do it on a different side. I'll put it on this side. Because this side's got that ornamental wood on it so it won't sit on there properly. So just, let's aim it down just a little bit so you can see. There we go. So just tighten it up by hand and then it's sturdy. It's just sitting there really, really well. I'm going to aim this back up again. There was a screw in the back of that. You just take the screw out and you take this steel bar with the wing nut and you just turn it in there. And then you tighten it with the wing nut. So that's like double nutting something to hold it together. So you've got that. And then you've got this part. It doesn't come assembled, but there you go. This is the bearing surface. You can get upgraded versions of this that have real metal instead of just a nylon ball. $3, whatever, on AliExpress if you don't like this. This has a tiny bit of play in it, but it's quite fine. And this bar here, it comes apart like this. So with this brass nut on here, that's what you screw into the end. And then once it bottoms out, you tighten up that brass nut. So that's like double nutting that. Uh, this comes folded in. So all you have to do is fold it up. That's what you hold when you're sharpening. And it's got bumpers for the throw. So you don't slide off the knife. Just put that on there. And you just tighten up this screw here to stop it from going up and down a little bit. It works quite well. Let's first talk about the stones that go on here. Like I showed you this stone before, this six inch stone, it can hold those no problem. You just push back on this spring. So you push that back, put it in, undo it, and it holds it. So that holds that tight and the stone's not gonna fall out. So you can go and sharpen away to your heart's delight. But if you have shorter stones and you don't have that full six inch long stone, you can use the Allen key that comes with it. It's just a, don't think it'll focus on that right now. You can just use this cheap Allen key that comes with it. It's got one Phillips head on the end. And you've got a nut there and you undo it, or a screw I should say. You undo that screw and you can slide this along so that shorter stones can get put in here, whatever length you need. So I'll just put that back a little ways. I know the stone that I wanna use next is best gripped right about there. Now you might be thinking, well, why don't I just buy it with the stones that come with this unit? Because you can get all kinds of deals on these with all kinds of different stones, combinations and stuff. They're all garbage. Those stones are all garbage. I highly recommend going to gridomatic.com and getting either the boride stones. Those are stones that are made in the United States or better yet, there's a set of 
uh, three stones made by Venev. It's a Russian company. And they have two different grits on each stone. So you have six different grits for these stones. For 54 US dollars, you've got six grits. And they're about two millimeters thick on either side of diamond material. So it's not just some diamond on the surface. It's that two millimeters thick of this diamond material. Diamonds all the way through. That's going to take you forever to wear through. Literally, probably the rest of your life. So now with this kind of stone, there's a little bit of grip on there, on that end. And you pull that spring back to hold it. And so even though it's a flat-ended stone, that's going to hold it no problem. And you can do that long stroke all the way up and down. You adjust the length of the stroke using these two uh, bits right here. So a shorter stroke, you move them in. Longer stroke, you move them out. It works very, very well. The question next is, how do you know what angle you've got? Well, of course, you can do that test where you put a marker along the edge and then you change the angle until you've matched what it is. That is, if your knife already has a consistent angle. If it's got a factory edge, it won't have a consistent angle. And in that case, you're going to want to use a digital angle finder. And uh, sorry about this, I'm down in my basement where I've got enough space to do this and the furnace keeps running because it's cold. But the digital angle finder, you just turn it on and you put it on here. It's a flat spot. It won't balance itself because this is um, some alloy. It's not, um, it's not like stainless steel. It's some aluminum alloy, I think. So you put it flat, zero it out, and then you can go on the flat of this bar, which is also aluminum, so it's not going to stick, so you got to hold it. And you can see right now I've got it at 31.9 degrees. So I don't want it at 31.9 degrees, so I'll change it. I'll move it down a little bit, tighten that up, put it back down. That's 26, so I've got to go way down. And I got 20 degrees. Got a little lucky. It was only three adjustments to get to 20 degrees. But once you've got it where you want it, you just make sure you've tightened up this nut here, that one right there. Make sure that's tight. And now I can sharpen my stone, and I know it's going to keep the same angle the whole time. Now let me back up the camera a little bit so you can see that it's not backbreaking to do this. Of course, this is a low table. So I'm going to be hunched over a little bit, but watch this. The actual sharpening with this is really easily done. You just hold on to it and you slide it back and forth. Very straightforward, very easy. You've got your stroke limiters. It just works. It's comfortable. It's not hard on your back or your neck. It's not hard on your hands. Uh, to turn it around, you just put that stone out of your way, you pull out and turn, and you've changed your angle, pull out and turn. It's very safe, you don't have to go near the cutting edge, you just pull it out. It works great. If you want something even better, well, here's the uh, TS Prof Blitz, this is the Blitz 360, that's a whole lot better. Easily sharpen knives that have a six inch long blade on that thing all the way down to little tiny one inch long blades It just works great. I haven't tried the cadet yet. I just haven't been able to get one um, Hopefully TS Prof might send one to me to review. I don't know. I would really like that, but uh, we'll see I always say get the very best sharpening system that you can afford and if all you can afford is 30 40 50 dollars Then don't get the work sharp precision Get one of these Ruxin Pros from China. Uh, AliExpress has got them in China, Russia, Spain, and there's another warehouse that they have them. So you can find them all, all over the place. A number of different vendors on AliExpress sell it. AliExpress is a little bit like Amazon in that Amazon sells stuff, but Amazon also lets Joe... Uh, I was almost going to say Joe Idiot... <laughs> But let's just let anybody sell stuff on their on the Amazon website. I've sold stuff on Amazon.ca. 
a, a fair bit of stuff I've sold on there. So anybody can sell on AliExpress. So always look at the seller's satisfaction rating. So I've got three sellers that are at 96.6% uh, or better rated. And uh, you can buy from them. You can buy it with all kinds of different stone options, which I suggest you don't do. Very, very much worth the investment to get Venev Diamond Stones. So there you go. Thanks so much for watching my video. I highly recommend this as compared to the Workshop Precision. But if you can, get something even nicer. You'll be much more satisfied in the long run. Till next time, remember friends, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb.